Hello everybody, welcome to how to master SQL DBA with TK. And as you already know, I'm TK. All right, all right, let's get down to business. Okay, if you have been following us now, you know we are almost there, right? So we, we post SQL videos on our YouTube page. This page that you see right here, right? So the page is Mastering SQL DBA or How to Master SQL DBA. So today is going to be our last video for the introduction, right? So as you can see, let me open my notepad. So right here. So we have done everything. So if today is your first time watching us, please go back and watch all these videos because they are all related. So we start with the introduction of what we'll be doing. Then we uh, 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 we went and got all the software that we needed for this training. Then we created virtual machines. Then we did change the name of those virtual machines. We promoted a virtual machine to a domain controller. Then we also created users and a service account that we are going to use during our SQL installation. Then the last class, which is very interesting, we configure our IP addresses on some of the virtual machines that we created so we could join them to a domain and it was a success. Today, we are going to partition our drives and also I'm going to show the class how to RDP. That means you can get from one virtual computer to another without logging out. And as a DBA, you would do that on a regular basis that's something you need to know how to do because that is just something you would do all right without talking too much let's go let me open up as usual this is our virtual machine or this is our hyper v manager all our virtual machines are up and running as you can see so our partition is going to be on our sql 01 and sql 02 because that is where we are going to do our installation so for the domain we don't need to for the domain computer we don't need to partition anything so let's fire up so let's go down here as so my virtual machines are running so we go down here and we go to our sql 01 if yours is off right you know what to do right right click on sql01 click on connect and then you sign in as shiloh t because that is a user that we created again if today's your first time you might be lost so it's better for you to go and watch the previous videos to know how we got here because all those videos are just a continuation of what we are doing all right so let's go okay this is sql01 right here first thing first right remote desktop in right to remote desktop rdp right so how do you do that and why do you do that so and what does that mean remember during i think the fourth or second class when we were disabling all the firewalls i asked you to enable if you go to your, your local server i asked you to enable this right here remote desktop what that main was like in the time we join this computer to a domain, now I do not need to do this. Minimize this, come down here to go to SQL02. No, I don't need to do that anymore, right? What I can do, if I'm on SQL01, remember, this is SQL01, what I can do, I can go from SQL01 directly from here. So I can remote desktop from here. So all I have to do right now is right here, all right remote desktop right here you see remote desktop connection so i right click pin to my start and right click and pin to my start and my tax bar so i have it right here so if i click right here this opens up remember i'm locked in this computer as shiloh t and remember also i gave shiloh t the permission to be a remote desktop user which means that they are Account is good. I can use that account to remote desktop. All I just need to do right now is put the computer name. So this computer is HDC uh, SQL 01. Now I want to go to HDC SQL 02 or even DC. It doesn't matter which computer. If I go HDC SQL 02 from here. 
I click connect. Oh yeah, it's working. So now it's prompting me to put in a password. So if I put in my password and look, if I say remember me, the next time I want to log in, it's not going to prompt me to put in a password. But in your company, usually all the time you want to log in is going to require you for security reasons to always put in the password right so this remember this remember this remember me option the only thing is going to remember you is just maybe your username but it's going to always prompt you to put in your password so now let me put in the password right so i put america let me sure i spell that correctly yes 20 25 just like that and i click that boom as you can see now i am in sql 02 and i'm fully inside i have access to all the folders everything it's like i locked in in, in, in sql 02 so that is that that it that is what it means to remote desktop from one computer to another and i can keep going so i can do the same thing here i can do my remote desktop right here I pin it and I can remote desktop into my DC. So uh, pin to taskbar and pin to start right here. So if I click right here and I put DC, I click connect, it's searching. Oh no, it's wrong. You know why? Because the name of that computer is not DC, it's called domain. So I gotta spare the whole thing. It's called domain. Okay, now that's the correct name. Click on it. Just like that, now it's prompting me to put in my credential, my password. So if I put America, you see that? America 2025, just like that. Let me check and I log in. Now I'm inside my DC, which means I've, I've you know, so which means I'm inside my DC. Remember, I was in SQL 01. Let, let, let me drag these things, right? I, I, I was in SQL 01. Then I went from SQL 01 to SQL 02. And now I'm in DC. So that's the meaning when they say you remote desktop from one computer to another. And again, you always do that. If you work from home, you are going to remote desktop from one computer to another. So you have to know how to do this, right? Remember, you have to pin this right here. And when you're remote desktoping, right, you put in your username and then you put in the computer name. Make sure it is spelled correctly, right? And also, we can use the IP address. We don't have to use, if you know, if you know an IP address, right? For example, I believe that for, uh, for, 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 for DC, the IP address on my computer ends with 100. I forgot the exact series, but if, if I use that IP address, I can remote desktop using that too. So that is something that you should keep in mind and that is something you should know. It is very, very important. There's no way you can be a SQL DBA if you don't know how to remote desktop. If, if one thing you wanna learn from this class today, that is it. Know how to remote desktop because we are going to do partitioning, but again, server team, is the one that does partitioning, right? So you never partition a disk probably, but you are going to remote desktop all the time. And sometimes you, when you remote desktop, you may write the wrong name of the computer like I just did. Remember I put DC instead of domain and had that fail message. So you encounter those problems. Always make sure you have the right computer name spelled correctly. And if you try to remote desktop into a computer, right? It fails what you want to do, right? I know this wasn't part of the plan, but let me explain it. You can pick that computer to make sure that the computer is, like for example, to make sure that the computer is not offline. For example, if I did remote desktop into SQL 01, and let's say it failed, and I know that that's the exact name, to verify that everything is working, there's something I can do, right? I can do, go to my command prompt, so call CMD, right click right here, run as administrator, click yes. Once I'm here, I can do this ping uh, hdc 
SQL SQL 01 enter okay you have to see it failed right it said pin request host could not be found why there's something wrong i don't think that is zero one right there right i spelled that wrong so let's do it again h dc dash sql zero one now click enter mm -hmm. oh no i forgot something else I didn't put the word pin. You see, these are the little things that sometimes you make <laughs> mistakes that you make that you have to look to understand. So let's do it the right way now. So pink, so P I N G dash or space at space H D C dash S Q L zero one. Enter again instead of O's again instead of me thinking a, 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 a zero i'm putting an o do it one more time pink space hdc dash s q l zero one enter there you go finally we got it okay as you see it's pinking it's that's the ip address right i was talking about so zero one the ip address is zero one right there so what it says that it's uh, it had package sent for package received so that's why sometimes you have to pay attention you saw how many mistakes are made right the first time right here number one the first mistake i've made is instead of putting a zero i put an o so it says this computer could not be found so sometimes that is how you 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 type a computer name thinking it is the right computer name but it's the wrong computer name the second mistake i made here as you can see no no this was the good one i think the, the second mistake i made here oh where's that part i did the oh here i didn't put the pin i just you know i didn't pink it so that is how you know for example just doing this now i know that my sql01 is up if somebody comes to me and be like oh i can access sql01 what's going on i'm like i don't think so because everything is running everything is fine then maybe there's something else wrong you know with, with what you are doing right so i can tell them that hey everything is fine my pink is working i can remote desktop into that computer you will have users all the time come to you like with the wrong computer name or something is wrong on their end the young with the wrong username something like that and they'll be like oh i can't access this sql server or something is wrong but you, you just have to look at it if you can verify what's wrong you have to ping at it and once you when your pin is working, go back to and be like, hey, I think there's something wrong at your end because I can ping my server and know this server is up, right? And I can access that server too. So just verify what is wrong at your end. Maybe there's a connection string that you're not doing it right. All right. So as you see, we are going to just do uh, for now because it's about 15 minutes. I think let's just keep this class short and make it about pink then for the next class we can do a partitioning yes we can do that so today we're just going to talk about uh pinging our servers and how to remote desktop into one into uh, from one server to another so once you remote desktop right last if i go let's say you want to because right now i'm in dc there are two ways for me to log out of dc some people what they do is right if you press on your thing you press windows arrow you see you see there is a little box that comes out there you can just write lock off from there and if you click okay it's logging me off so now i'm now on sql02 now another way of logging off right i can click right here so let me show you multiple ways of logging off but remember like i said don't ever shut the computer down don't restart it don't ever 
right? Always log off from your session. Worst case scenario, disconnect. But the difference is that when you disconnect, you leave your session open, which is a waste of resources. So it's always good to log off. So you come over here, you can always log out. And now I'm back on my original server. So I'm right here back on SQL01. So I remote desktop into multiple computers. And another thing, sometimes you have the right name, everything you remote desktop is going to tell you that this user like you shilo t is not configured to remote desktop right which means that you have to go back to your infrastructure team or whoever is in charge of creating this account and be like hey i need you to make this user a remote desktop user like how we did right remember when we did we met shilo a remote desktop user they might create your account and then forget to make you a remote desktop user on that specific server so that's what you that's the thing that you will know as a sql server dba that will make your life easier that when you talk people know you know what you are talking about right uh so you explain things to them they know you you know what you are really talking about all right so we are going to end this right here at the part A. So then we'll do the next class, which is the part B, which is now partitioning. So we are going to partition our drives. All right, ciao, ciao. See you all. Bye-bye.